Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by New Stavette, America's leading spray deodorant. Now with its anti-immunity factor. Poof, there goes perspiration. Now let's all play What's My Line? Now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, the charming young humorist who stars in his own television show here in New York five nights a week, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. And on my left, a lovely lady uh, whom I tell you about every week at this time. If you want to know more about her, and everybody does, get the current issue of Newsweek. Her name? Arlene Francis. <laughs> <laughs> and on my left, a gentleman who knows practically every word in the wonderful American College Dictionary that he publishes and can use them in a sentence, Mr. Bennett Serve. <laughs> and on my left, our famous moderator who, despite his rapidly advancing years, played five sets of tennis <laughs> today, so he probably won't have strength to flip those cards, old man John Charles Daly. <laughs> gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, some nice people have come to visit us and brought some nice occupations. And our idea of a nice occupation is one that gives the panel some trouble. We think we'll give them some trouble tonight, and we'll also have a famous guest challenger a bit later on. But I think it's time for our experts to meet our first challenger, whose job has to be spotted. So will you sign in, please? Ma'am. <laughs> Carol? Carol Rubin, or Rulin, is that Rubin? <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. Right. Uh, -huh. uh, well, let's pass that one right by. Uh, <laughs> is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss Rubin? Right. Oh, that's very nice. Well, over here are four friends of mine on the panel, and they do have to have a chance to get to know you a little bit anyway. So would you march up there and let them get a good close right. look at you, please? Thank you. Hello. <laughs> All right, Miss Rubin, now you come over, if you will, and sit down right next to me. And I think probably you know that uh, the panel gets one free guess before we really put the hooks into them. And we'll use uh, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen to start the free guess. Well, Miss Rubin gave Steve rather an odd look just now. I think she must be a mind reader. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, Mr. Allen. I tell you, I got an odd look, but she didn't give it to me. <laughs> uh, maybe she was looking at the peculiar costume I have on tonight. I think she's a color consultant. A color consultant. Miss Francis. I think she's a lifeguard at some fortunate swimming pool. Mr. Sir. Well, I noticed how neatly Miss Rubin wrote her name with that little circle for a dot over the eye. I would say she's a school teacher. A school teacher? Mm -hmm. Strange, because she's a lifeguard at some fortunate swimming pool. <laughs> Let's review a little history now. This is the third time in our more than four years of doing the program that this has happened. Huh? Six? Is it? No. We and first we're all very sorry, too. Atomic scientists, and then the traffic Two umpires. policemen. Two umpires. Umpire, baseball man, Santa Claus. That's right. Flip that's some right. cards, John. Flip some cards. I'm tired tonight. <laughs> Flip them all at once. There, that's the only way to do that. <laughs> And now I think we ought to tell the panel how smart we thought. We're going to tie you in knots with this one because Miss Carroll is a lifeguard that we were hoping you'd get to. Do you work for a profit-making organization? And she would say no. She works for the Army? Well, she doesn't work for the Army, actually. She works for the Officers Club. That's hmm. part of the Army, isn't no, it? No, that would, would have been a social group. And we were going to hang you up on that rope for the better part of ten minutes. And then uh, we were going to tell you what it was That's all a shame. about. I'm terribly sorry, Miss Rulin. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss Rubin, you won the full prize because you deserve it. Thank you. And I'm only sorry you're not going to be here longer because we've certainly enjoyed your visit. I've 
enjoy television. And there's something about television cameras. You know that they like pretty girls just as much as most of us humans do, and we don't like to take such a pretty girl away from our cameras so quickly. I'll come again sometime. Good. That's what we'd like to hear. Thanks very much. It's nice Thank to have you. had you on What's My Life. Good night. <laughs> Well, let's see what we can do with a second challenger. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? I don't know. I'm a mind reader, not you. <laughs> Charlene. Charlene Schaefer, is that right? <laughs> Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss Charlene Schaefer. And where are you from? Marengo, Illinois. Marengo, Illinois? Is that near Chicago? Yes, it is. Just outside? Mm -hmm. How far? Is it? About 64 miles. 64 miles. Mm -hmm. 64 inches. Would you go over and see them, please? Hello. All right, Miss Schaefer, over here now, if you will, and sit down next to me, and uh, we'll talk to the panel a bit. Hmm? They get one free guess. I think probably you know it. We'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she's a professional bird watcher. A professional bird watcher, Mr. Allen. I think she's a watchmaker. Miss Francis. I think she operates the trolley car. Mr. Sir. Well, I don't know what Miss Schaefer does, but I bet her hand has never lost its skill. <laughs> well, <laughs> well that's last is true, but where does it get you? Now we'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Miss Charlene Schaefer. At the same time, we will tell them what her line is. <laughs> But, Ms. Schaefer, the panel's got to go to work. You know how we score this operation. We flip our lids here. And every time we flip a lid, why, you've got a no answer, you see. You all set? Yes. Good. Ms. Schaefer is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Steve Allen. Is there a product connected with your work, Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Is it the sort of thing that uh, I might come into contact with? Yes. Is this useful? I mean, could it be used in the home? Yes. If the home were a big home, might this product ever be found upstairs? Yes. Could it be found in one of the upstairs bedrooms? Yes. Is this the sort of thing that might uh, work while people sleep? Yes. Uh, if the weather were very cold, for example, might one of these come in handy on a cold night to take the bed with you or something of that sort? Might this come in handy to take to bed with you on a cold night? <laughs> no, I no. don't think so. <laughs> One job, nine to go, Miss Francis. Uh, is it something you can hold in your hand? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it anything that uh, might go on the body? Go, no. you mean? As Does a, it come uh, in contact with the body? You blew that one, dear. That's all I right. There's two right. down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. You said it did not come in contact with the no, body. No, we said it was not something that went on the body. Well, now I'll be, I'll get a second no and say, could it possibly come into contact with the body? Yes. Yes, well, it, it could. could. Mm -hmm. Well, now, we have a sponsor who's located somewhere around Chicago. Could you possibly have anything to do with the product that is sponsoring this program tonight? You mean about it? You, you're covering the whole Stop area at. of manufacturing. Could it have sales, anything to do with the toilet article? No. no. <laughs> Three dollars, seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Have we established that this thing is portable? It uh, could be established if you'd like to establish it. No, I just wanted to find out if it was established. <laughs> I don't believe it has been specifically established that it's portable. Uh, well, didn't Arlene ask something about could she hold it in her hand? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. She could hold it in her hand, but mm -hmm. uh, you'd like me to believe that it would be hard to carry around? Oh, nothing of the sort. I mean, I just if you want to ask the question, that's... <laughs> no. uh, is this... Um, solid rather than liquid? Yes. Is it bought in a store? Yes. Would it usually be bought in some type of specialty store rather than a great big uh, department store? No. Uh, four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. Has it any moving parts? Yes. <laughs> Is metal any part of its makeup? Yes. Does electricity have anything to do with it? No. You mean, does it have a cord plug-in, or you need electricity to run it, you mean? No. Well, no, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> five out of five to go, Miss Francis. Is it a useful product? Yes. 
Uh, is it more useful and decorative as a rule? Yes. Uh, the, uh, do the moving parts uh, show in any way? Yes. Are the moving parts uh, hands on a clock by any chance? Hands on a clock? Do you mean that because they go around the You dial. don't need to waste all the time. Now, just <laughs> give me a no. <laughs> Take that and for to go, Mr. Oh, Sir. This was established that it came into contact with the body. Well, you can hold a, uh, an alarm clock. In your hand. Uh, when you this comes it. in contact with the body, Miss Schaefer, does it does it give a pleasurable sensation to the person? <laughs> no. <laughs> Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Does this ever come in contact with the body of something that isn't human? No. No. Small conference, please. Small body. We have decided to be helpful. We will give you a yes answer to that last question. Uh, does this perform uh, a function which would make it extremely useful to nervous ladies? <laughs> I would say this, that the question is in so broad in its scope that rather than risk, if, if uh, Miss Charlene is, is willing, rather than risk... Uh, <laughs> rather than... <laughs> Down and three to go. The uh, program may look a little sloppy, but my tie just fell off. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, the question is so <coughs> broad in scope that I don't think if Miss Sharon's willing to, to go along with it, we can give you a no, but I don't want you to take the answer as necessarily uh, indicating any clear pattern of question. Well, I'll tell you follow. exactly what I had in mind, and then you can give me the no, John. Right. I had in mind a mouse trap. Schaefer, I did the best I could to get her out in the field, but she wouldn't go. Now you have to tell us what Miss Schaefer has to do with mousetraps. She sticks pearls and rhinestones on them. <laughs> 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 That's right, it's a basic, uh, their basic affiliation. What is Makes it? them? Makes mousetraps is absolutely right. <laughs> well, I must say that I think that you've uh, <laughs> sort of put our flags and banners up again. You did give them a rough tussle. You've got... Pretty good. Seven down and only three to go there before we get through. And I want to thank you for coming to visit us and bringing a very interesting okay. occupation. I hope you had fun. It was nice to have you with us. Thank you. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends on the panel have their blindfolds for this particular part of the program. Are they all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, panel, in the case of our mystery challenger, we get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with Bennett Sir. Well, that was a burst of spontaneous applause. I, I take it that your face is one that is often recognized by people. Is that correctly? Is that correctly? Is that correct? <laughs> is that correct? That's a word in the dictionary, too. <laughs> correctly, yes. Girl with a mouse trap, let's be honest. <laughs> uh, am I correct in assuming that that is a feminine voice I hear? <laughs> Have you uh, ever been part of the entertainment world? Are you now, despite all evidences of the contrary, still a part of the entertainment world? <laughs> Have you ever uh, contributed your talents to a television program? Yes. Would you say that you appeared with some fair degree of regularity on a television program? One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. You are a performer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, 
I take it that you're famous for something other than television. Rather. Uh, are you an... <laughs> uh, are you an actress? Right, Jeff. Uh, films? <laughs> um, more films than the stage? <laughs> uh, American? <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Not a heroine. <laughs> not a heroine. Villain. You don't want to try morphine. I guess not. Right. <laughs> Let me see. Am I correct in guessing that despite the voices you've been doing the last few minutes, you have never worked in a Tarzan picture? <laughs> Yes, our man has never worked in a Tarzan picture. She has not. All right. Uh, do you do comedy? Uh, is it more often than not that you would be seen in a comedy role? Right now. Hmm. We don't want to be helpful, but our guest's nickname is not Winnie. <laughs> Uh, where are you running? No, let me see. <laughs> are you uh, what we might out and out call a character woman? <laughs> Nothing personal. <laughs> Anybody there? <laughs> yeah, we're having a conference, Steve. <laughs> The answer we've decided to that last question is no. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Well, now, wait a minute. You're, you're not a character woman, but you are a comedian. Is that correct? Yes. I know. She's a steel guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Do you sing? Yes. That's what she's been doing. <laughs> um, really, I am so... Are you brunette? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Have you ever appeared on the Broadway stage? Yes. Have you ever been in a musical show in New York? Yes. Um, was it by any chance a play, have you ever been in a play that was written by two up-and-coming young men named Rogers and Hammerstein? No. No. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you in the nicest possible way as corny as Kansas in August? <laughs> uh, do you ever play dates at uh, county fairs and other places where you are uh, a very big click in something other than a movie or theater? Are you Judy Canova? Judy Canova! What brings you to New York? Oh, just a little vacation. Oh, that's wonderful. I love to hear about people coming to New York for a vacation. Yeah, of course, I, I wanted to see what's my line, too, you know. This is the best way to see it, sitting right there. They can't what, see what you. What was the Broadway someone... show, Miss Canova? Pardon? What was the Broadway show? Oh, the last one was Yokel Boy, the Majestic Theater. Yokel Boy? Mm -hmm. The Joey Brown? No, Starring Buddy Bennett Epson. Starring Bennett Cerf. Hmm? Oh. What? <laughs> Buddy Epson. Oh. Well, we do thank you. I must say, I think you produced more voices than anybody we've had for a long, long time, and everyone better than the one before. Well, thank Thanks you. Thanks for being our guest. It's been a lot of fun. Would you say hello to the family? Thank you. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. 
John Conrad, right? Where are you from, Mr. Conrad? From New York. You're from New York. Yes. Well, we haven't got too much time, so why don't you just take a look at the panel, let them look at you, and then you come with me, will you? Sure. Sit you down right here. And the panel, having had a very quick look at you, now gets its one free guess, and we'll begin with Miss Kilgallen. I think he's a script writer. A script writer, Mr. Allen. Elevator captain. Miss Francis. Roofer. Mr. Sir. He's Conrad in quest of his youth. Conrad in quest of his youth. A book you may have read. A book I have read, yes. <laughs> but that isn't the right answer. So we'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mr. John Conrad of New York, and at the same time, we'll let them know what is behind it. All right, Mr. Conrad, you know how we score with the flipping department yes, here. Sir. Mr. Conrad is self-employed. Let's begin the general questioning with uh, Arlene Francis. Is there any product connected with what you do, Mr. Conrad? Yes. Uh, is it ever used in the home? Yes. Uh, is it used uh, in the... Well, could it be used in the lower floor of a home? Yes. Is it something that can be carried? Yes. Is it carried by men and women both? Yes. It can be. I mean, it I think, be. yes, you don't want to mislead mm -hmm. you. Is, uh, uh, is, there any pro is there any metal in the product? Yes. Is it ever found in the kitchen? No. No, I think that would be highly unlikely. One down and nine to go, Mr. Seth. Well, Mr. Conrad, if, if it was a two-story house, would it be found on the second floor, possibly? No. no. That would be two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it um, in the category of furniture or part of furniture? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, is it furnishings? No. Yeah, that category, no. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Is it part of the house? No. You mean a wall or a roof or something like that? Anything that is part of the house. Five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Now, we've located the fact it would be on the ground floor of the house, but not the kitchen. Correct. Yes. How about the uh, dining room? There could be a circumstance where it might be found. Isn't Quite possible. But not, not customarily in the no. dining room? No. We are ha having to accept here its introduction into the house. There would be one place where you would expect it to uh, go, and the others are either highly improbable or just barely possible. Have we established the fact as to whether or not this was portable? We have not. Yes, it, has, it has been portable. determined that it is portable, yeah. Uh, would you buy this possibly in a store that sold uh, electrical equipment, no. televisions, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing? No, I don't think so. Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, this is used sometimes in places other than home. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Is there any sound associated with this? No. That's seven down and three to go, Mr. Allen. Has it anything to do with sports? Sports? No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, I guess it doesn't. <laughs> Eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. Is the entire thing metal? Substantially. Primarily, yes. Primarily. Would it be found outside of a front door ever? <laughs> yes, on occasion. <laughs> found outside of his front door. Well, we don't want to be unfair. I mean, if anything might be found outside of a front door at one time or another. Is it near the ground? Is it near the ground? When it is, when it is being used, is it near the ground? What do you mean by near the ground? Down there, John. <laughs> <laughs> you mean right on it? At, mm -hmm. A foot above it, three feet no, above it? No, I mean it has feet. to rest on the ground. Rest on the ground. That's what we were waiting for. That's no. That makes Good. it nine down to one to go, Mr. Ground. Sir. Does it hang from something? <laughs> Does it hang from something? <laughs> no. Sir. That's ten down and no more to go, and hang on. It's Mr. suspended. Mr. Conrad operates a lie detector. Mr. Conrad, you have won the full prize. We flipped all the cards, and no uh, we got... No complete without a, a lie detector. Lie detector. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, just to clear up that point, you do find that he goes into the homes with portable well, ones and does the thing. So you I... get the whole prize, and thank you for being our guest. It was nice to have you with us and watch my life. And until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Good night, Arlene. Good night, boys, for him tonight. <laughs> They're in bed tonight. And I would like to say that the gentleman on my left just said that the most accurate lie detector he knows is his beautiful wife, Phyllis. Good night, Phyllis. <laughs> no metal in his eyes.
Good night, John. Good night. Good night, Bennett. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What? My Line. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. In association with the CBS Television Network.